The natural world you see around you today may not be as natural as you think. When you walk through your local park, a garden, the countryside or woodland, you may come across all sorts of animals which you think of as distinctly British. However, the truth may surprise you. See, the natural world around us did not stop evolving after the last ice age with the disappearance of woolly mammoths and rhinoceros. People have been altering the landscape around them since the Stone Ages quite drastically, bringing in animals from all over the world, sometimes intentionally and sometimes by accident. Today we're going to be talking about a few of these animals and explain to you where you can find these and hopefully you'll go out and about and discover some for yourself. The Harlequin ladybird is one of the more recent introductions into Britain. It was first spotted here in 2004 and it came from the Asian continent. Now, they're difficult to tell apart from the native ladybird. A little trick is that the native ones typically have a black underbelly with black legs, whereas the underbelly and the legs of the Asian ladybird are typically orange. You can find them outside nearly everywhere in Britain between the months of April and October. After that, they start to hibernate, and you may even find them in little nooks and crannies inside your house if they've wiggled their way through an open window. We'll just send this little guy back on his way now. Another animal that you might be able to find near your house is the signal crayfish. This is a North American animal that was first brought here by the UK government in the 1970s. They are now occurring everywhere in Britain in slow flowing waters such as rivers, streams, canals and you can find them in lakes and ponds as well. They were brought here for food and they were brought in here to be exported to other countries as a foodstuff. Unfortunately some of them got away and they now live everywhere outcompeting the native crayfish. If you find yourself near some trees and you look up, you may just see a grey squirrel. They are pretty common in Britain nowadays, but they were only brought here in the 1800s from North America. The Victorians absolutely love them as pets. And the first alleged record that we have of them being released to the wild stems from 1876, when a banker, Mr. Brocklehurst, returned with a couple of grey squirrels from North America from a business trip and set them loose on his estate because he thought they would make quite nice pets to have running around the garden. Unfortunately, the grey squirrel has been outcompeting the red squirrel ever since. It was made illegal to keep grey squirrels as pets in 1932, but the damage was already done. At this point in Britain, the Isle of Wight is the last stronghold for the red squirrel. What have the Romans ever done for us? Well, the Romans have brought all sorts of animals to Britain that have now really become part of the furniture. An example is fallow deer. Fallow deer can be found everywhere, typically near woodland and open clearings, and you might see them around dawn or around dusk. We've found bones of them, for example, in the Roman uh, palace of Fishbourne in Sussex, but it's likely that they disappeared again after the fall of the Roman Empire. Fallow deer didn't really take off until they were reintroduced in the early medieval period. They were brought here for hunting in deer parks. They were used for hunting by nobility, royalty, important high-placed officials. Inevitably, some of them escaped and their descendants can still be found in the British countryside today. Deer escaping from deer parks is not something of the distant past alone. In the early 20th century, a couple of animals that look quite particular escaped from parks in London and in Bedfordshire. These animals are known as the Reeves or Chinese Munjack and the Chinese water deer. These peculiar, slightly smaller deer species can now still be found all over the Midlands and the South and they are rapidly expanding their population. Another animal that can be found all the way from Scotland to the New Forest is the seeker deer, which originates from Asia. Open grasslands are typically the habitat of the humble rabbit. Much like the fallow deer, they were brought here first by the Romans, 
to then disappear and then being brought back in the medieval period. They were not kept in cages, but they were kept in earthen burrows, which are referred to as warrens. Inevitably, some of these got away as well, and as you can see, they've been a success ever since. The final species is the pheasant. Found everywhere in Britain nowadays, but until the medieval period, most people would have never seen one. It was brought here from Asia, and it soon became a beloved game bird. It is even said that the Archbishop of Canterbury, Thomas Becket, dined on pheasant on the evening before his murder in 1162. Understanding the history of invasive species is extremely important for archaeologists. It helps us trace contacts and long distance trade between people it can even help us date features. Why don't you try to find the animals discussed in this video? Download the field guide and have a go. Go outside, explore and have fun. Mm -hmm.